Welcome to In Her Voice, a podcast created for women who listen to and live by their deepest wisdom, their inner voice. This was made for you, the woman who feels pulled to more, to lead, to create, to dream, and to be a world changer. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am an inner voice coach. Join me here each week as we explore what it means to reach for your inspired potential, all while honoring your worthiness each and every day. Hello, everyone. This is Kelly. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for joining me today. Maybe you're out on a walk, or maybe you're in the car driving somewhere fun, hopefully, or maybe you're doing dishes or, you know, just sitting still and taking a listen and giving yourself this time. Wherever you are, I hope that you are happy and I hope that you are well. And I hope that you are excited to hear this interview today. So I have Jacqueline Claire on. This is such an interesting interview because she is an artist. And what we talked about um, is how you can use art as a practice. And oh man, I have to tell you, it brought up some things for me because as a recovering perfectionist, I don't particularly love to do things that I'm not good at. And art is one of those things. And she, she actually shares some about how she teaches people to really embrace those qualities and also gives them tools to, to learn how to do it better. And I think that you're just really going to enjoy this. And I took a lot out of it myself. Before we get to the interview, I want to remind you that this Sunday, May 31st at 10 a.m. Eastern is my Create the Life You Want workshop. I really hope that you will join me. This is for you if, if you are ready to start feeling aligned every day, if you are wanting practices that you can do day by day by day that help you feel the way you want to feel now. You don't have to wait until you hit the goal to feel how you want to feel. Guess what? You don't have to wait. So if that's what you want, there, this is for you. If you are ready to listen to your inner voice and really start to do what your inner voice is asking, this is a great way to begin that. So if that sounds like something you're interested, I encourage you to check it out and sign up. You can register at kellycover.com slash practices. This is going to be on zoom. It's open to anyone. Um, it's really a time for you to be still, to get quiet, to listen to what your inner voice has to say. And it's a gift of time and space to you to really dedicate these 90 minutes, the 90 minutes of this workshop to yourself, to say to yourself, you matter today. And I'm going to give you this because I know that you need it. So again, that's kellycover.com slash practices. I hope that you will join me. Let me tell you a little bit about Jacqueline Claire. Jacqueline Claire is an artist driven to uplift her community and bring people together through her paintings. She devotes her life and career to exploring the role of art and faith in elevating audiences, encouraging them to access mystical realities. Jacqueline coined the term spiritual realism to describe her work as a visual artist. Spiritual realism describes her own deep connection to the inner forces that guide her creative process. The exploration of spiritual realism in Jacqueline's work focuses on humanity's divine purpose and our ability as individuals to reflect and refine how this manifests in material reality. Her art is connected to her own expression of spirituality, sometimes inspired directly by the writings of the Baha'i faith. Painting has become a means of meditation and prayer for Jacqueline, and she hopes that spirit ignites the same sense of connection, joy, and empowerment in her viewers. I think you're going to love this interview. Jacqueline is just a gem, and this conversation is lovely. Welcome, Jacqueline Claire, to the In Her Voice podcast. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. And this is going to be such an interesting conversation because we want to talk about empowering a fresh awareness of your life's purpose. 
And there's this added element that you are an artist and in your work, um, in your own work and in your work with um, other people, you bring art into that. So I think I want to start with um, the art piece because that's something new and something that we don't talk about very often on this podcast. And I'm really curious to know how you came to be an artist and how that became your purpose. Mm, So interesting. Absolutely. Well, I grew up in a fairly creative family. So I was lucky to be exposed to not only different forms of art, but just the reality that that could be a path for someone. Um, So writers, entrepreneurs, um, designers, cooks, and my mom is a really prolific painter. So I grew up around it. I wasn't really drawn to it myself. I I had talent, I had ability, like I drew a lot as a child, but I think I did have a lot of sort of myth blocks about what it meant to be an artist and you had to be like some sort of, you know, crazy personality type or something and I never related to that growing up. And I ended up pursuing acting, which I know is an art, but it was very strange. I was very adamant that I was not an artist. I was an actor. It was very weird. And I lived in L.A. for several years, and it wasn't until I started to become open and aware that, like, acting was an incredible art form, and the more creative one could be with their choices in that path the more embracing of their own imagination the better their work even if it's in like some silly tv show and it wasn't until then that I started to sort of like become drawn back to my childhood hobby of drawing and creating art and as I began to play with that more and it really was in a spirit of play and sort of gift giving to others I found that it brought a lot more joy and really accomplished what I had hoped all along to do with acting which was to not merely express my own spirit and what I felt was beautiful and meaningful but really help other people feel less alone you know if you can see a piece of art or watch a performance and you're like oh my gosh somebody else knows how I have felt in my life Mm -hmm. like that was always the goal and I found that through my own visual art I was actually much more able to connect with that rather than being limited by somebody else's script you know Mm -hmm. and I also had an interesting upbringing in terms of spirituality and faith. A lot of my family was very like sort of irreligious, sort of like if if it doesn't immediately bring me happiness or wealth or whatever, like what what good is it? And then there were also some very like committed spiritual people in my family. My mom and my grandparents were members of the Baha'i faith. So I always had both these examples uh, growing up and mixing that with this sort of creative family as well. I, I had this sense of like aesthetics and I knew that like oftentimes when art is meant to sort of convey some element of the spiritual that if it's um if the spiritual overrides the aesthetics it can be a turn off for people who aren't already in that audience like Mm -hmm. People who feel much closer to God listening to the Rolling Stones than like Christian rock, you know? Right. So I was also aware that like if you do want to touch people's hearts, I believe, with art and like the most amount of people as possible, the art itself has to really stand on its own, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And so how did you move into a place of helping other people understand what they're purposes. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, Kelly, before we started recording, you were talking about like having sort of the courage to to live our purpose, like to move into it and to mm-hmm. like fully inhabit that space. And my belief and some of my experience in life is that we have to walk that path sometimes to even discover what it is, you know, that we we might be thinking that our purpose is one thing and we are very much challenged and, you know, we get these redirects in life and it's sort of like the analogy that C.S. Lewis used about like taking a horse and turning it into like this it wants to be a great racehorse, but actually its purpose is to become a Pegasus. And it's like, why am I growing these lumps on my shoulder? You know, like this isn't helping me be a great racehorse. And then it's like, no, that's because its purpose is so much like something it never could have envisaged, you know? Mm. So in my case, it it isn't that I, you know immediately had the blueprint and went around went about building it it's kind of like a one step at a time but I really I really recognize that the acting path that I had been on my whole life was really not bringing me joy and it wasn't bringing anyone else joy and and started exploring visual art and really started to take to that and um there was a personal story behind this, but I had had a very challenging summer the year I did my first series of paintings. And the next year, I sort of wanted to create some new memories. It was around my birthday. And so I had an art show exhibiting the work I had done the year before. And I, in the same location that I had been, So I was like really intentionally trying to create a a new emotional blueprint around this space and around this series of art. And I invited all my favorite people and I told somewhat of the personal story behind my work and I tied it in with this mystical book called The Seven Valleys. And the reason was I had seven paintings and they were all mystical landscapes and it seemed to go really beautifully with this idea of the seven valleys which is a parable for the universal life spiritual journey and the different stages that we go through in life so I tied it the art in with this mystical concept and I invited a lot of audience interaction. There were like different ways that people were invited to like mingle and discuss and then share. And it was just a really beautiful experience. And I, afterwards, I mean, it was one of those things that just felt so sparkly and inspired and like, oh my gosh, the muses were completely with Mm -hmm. me today. Mm -hmm. And I thought, all right, I think I'm going to have to do this again and like, you know, refine it so that it isn't just like, welcome to my birthday party type of thing. But um, this really began a whole series of live events that have now, I've traveled across the country, I've done it at universities and different places of using the art as the sort of springboard and template for going deeper and finding the personal relevance in these like big mystical concepts about life being a spiritual journey and that's that's how we connect with our life purpose you know Mm, I love it it's so fascinating to me and you know what I love about this story is how personal it is and how universal it is at the same time Mm -hmm. because I think that um you know we can all take something from that we can all see how we have to go we have to go through our own valleys so to speak and we Mm -hmm. have to find our own joy and we have to be courageous enough to let go of anything that we might think that means and just like be in it And I'm really curious about how you sort of took that really bold step. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did it take for you to take that bold step of like honoring 
oh, this is my path. Mm, a really bad breakup? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that okay. always the awakening for us? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, well, so it's, you get to the point where you just, it's all you have. Yeah. And and there's a little more to it. I So oh, I had been in L.A. First off, I acted since I was a child. Eventually moved to L.A. I was out there for several years. And and then this, this courtship situation arose and it was a long distance thing and I had about a year of living in LA and slowly sort of you know considering if my life could be different than the one that I had mapped out for myself and had been aiming for my whole life like I knew if this situation worked out that I would need to leave LA and I would be going back to Texas where I was from and the chances of really launching a career there were far less than LA so like I had about a year to sort of like start examining and detaching and in that process it was like it gave me enough hope and detachment to actually see like actually you know what this path I've been on my whole life I actually am not digging it that much and and I think you know like that whole situation was like such a blessing because it's hard to admit that the path you've been on for say 19 years maybe isn't right <laughs> you know mm, it's really hard and I I think that that's something that women in particular push up against because they say who am I to change my mind exactly exactly and especially you have all that personal baggage of like all the people you've been like you wait and see I'm gonna do this you know right. yeah then, you gotta prove it yeah and so I came to Texas and that's actually where I painted the series that I referred to and when the relationship ended I was like oh my gosh, like, where do I belong? Like, I no longer feel that I have a home in LA or in acting, but I'm also not now taking on the role of, like, stepmother in Texas. Like, I was like, who am I? Where do I belong? What is my thing? Where? And it was a scary couple of months. Fortunately, it wasn't that long. But I remember telling my housemate that I felt like I had been like I'm trying to remember the exact phrase basically that I felt like at a cellular level I had been like like just broken into a million pieces and I was like floating through space and I hadn't like rematerialized yet mm, like yeah you know like like I teleported and something went wrong and I'm like just just particles of cell in space um so it was moving through that place of who am I and where do I belong and kind of doing the day at a time bit um, where I started to really, I guess you have to strip away everything sometimes and life helps you to really get in touch with your heart and then just say, okay, I'm going to let this lead me for the next you know, the next steps in my life. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because we're recording this mid-May 2020, right? Um, sort of during the pandemic, some some of us are in places that are still stay-at-home orders and, and others are starting to slowly <laughs> reemerge from their houses and their shells, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like kind of we've had this circumstantial pause put on us where you know it's almost like what you said like we're like what are we doing we're sort of floating and all of our cells are like sort of hovering waiting for something to happen absolutely and so like this is what a beautiful um gift in many ways this is because we can kind of experience what you're talking about without the heartbreak mm -hmm. of you know the devastation of an ended relationship or something else like that but we have kind of this opportunity to say oh well when when i come back together what will that look like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the same anymore mm -hmm. and you know i'm really curious 
for you, particularly in that time of how you used art as a practice, as a way to find yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, the beautiful thing about art is that it allows you to just think about it if that's what you want to do. Like you're just thinking about color and paint and, you know, what you're doing. Um, And there are also spaces in there where I feel a lot of other stuff sort of comes up. It's almost like, you know, a meditative practice where, you know, things start to arise in this space of stillness. But both, both sides are really therapeutic when you're just thinking about color and paint and that sort of thing. And then also when you're in that space of inviting stillness. And I would say in my case, I I was not approaching art necessarily to intentionally work through my emotions. I was doing it because I wanted to and I wanted to create something beautiful. Um, but through that process, there's so much that is worked through and very much just like what you described about how a lot of us, our lives are in a certain degree of chaos because there's, we've, we've changed the very structure of daily life. And it wasn't like something we all signed up for, you know, it's like, ah, (laughs) we didn't pick it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, so, and in art, it's, so much so much of the time you're like oh I wanted to make something beautiful and all I've done is made a big mess and like there's so many places where you're like just in the mess and you have to keep moving forward you have to keep moving forward and so as like scary and frustrating as it can be it's also this beautiful template to like learn in your body that sense of like oh this space of chaos and uncertainty I've been here before and I got through it and something beautiful came out of it and often for me the pieces of art that go through the most turmoil where it's like oh god how am I ever gonna get out of this like maze that I've created those often become the most rich and surprising and lovely pieces because they took me so far out of my realm of expectation that something was discovered you know Mm -hmm. yeah well and so you are an artist and you know when I think of someone who is a an artist who is a painter, like obviously you have skill and ability. Me, on the other hand, I don't. I am creative and I honor that and I own it, but I do not have skill or ability or talent when it comes to painting or drawing or anything like that. So how could someone like me use art as a practice? Sure. Well, I mean, you bring up a good point. Like, for sure, I was raised in an environment that, you know, exposed me to it and nurtured me in it from the get-go. But I actually believe that we do all have a creative spirit. And basically where I'm going with this, you know, like I didn't paint for a long time because I thought that seemed very scary. It seemed like this huge lack of control to like hold a paintbrush versus a pencil. And um, I actually learned painting by learning different abstract expressionist techniques. And the beautiful thing about abstract expressionism is that it's not meant to convey anything representational. Like the whole point is that you're just playing with color and expression. And if you learn some simple fundamentals, like just how to use a a limited amount of colors so that it has a sense of harmony, I think everyone can make things that are beautiful. And now, of course, I'm using my personal 
example of painting uh, to answer your question um, because I'm I'm sort of big on this right now because I'm since the pandemic I've been teaching online classes both one on one and I have a, like a video series going right now and it's called spiritual growth through abstract expressionism so I'm a big advocate that we all have the capacity to make beautiful paintings and there are ways to to do that that I can help you with. Um, and as far as other than that, like, I think if there is a type of visual art that you are drawn to, whether it's pottery or sketching with colored pencils or sewing, that there's just so much benefit in just doing things and creating things. And you don't have to worry about competing with someone else or trying to sell it on Etsy or you know it's just for the pure joy of doing something that is nurturing for your spirit and you take something that didn't exist and create something that's really personal and unique one of one of the things that I think is so interesting about using art as a practice, particularly for people like me who are recovering perfectionists, who are, you know, tend, tend to be overachievers, right? It's this way to practice releasing expectations, to practice doing something just for you, mm -hmm. to practice doing something that will not be perfect and is still perfect if you know what I mean I do and I I think that the beautiful thing about art is it can be all of those things mm -hmm. and it can be um, it can be the practice of recovering perfectionists right it can be a spiritual practice it can be a practice to understand how to put yourself back together again like mm -hmm. you said, it's so powerful in that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I would love for you to share with people is like, if this is something that they think would be helpful to them in their lives, like, where in the world do we start? I have no idea of even where to begin. Like, do I get a sketchbook? Do I buy a watercolor palette? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Well, you've totally uh, described a lot of my students, too. Like, it's often women who are like, you know, they're totally recovering perfectionists. And, you know, I paint with acrylic and that's what I have them paint with. And, you know, it's like they just have to like you know, the first step is like getting messy, like they have to be okay, like getting kind of messy and getting paint on them. Um, and I just shared this Carl Jung quote with one of them that you made me think of. There is no light without shadow and no psychic wholeness without imperfection. And as far as getting started, I mean, like for me, when I, with my video series and when I work with people, I say, you know, get some canvases. You can get canvas panels online or if you're able to go to a, a you know, a superstore that has art supplies, um, you know, some canvas panels. I like to use a lot of sort of tools and techniques so that it's not like, okay, here's your canvas and here's your paint. Now be brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I like to build in ways that create surprise. So we might do like a, we might mix two colors of paint on the canvas and kind of swirl it around and play with it and do something interesting. And then we'll actually use something like masking tape to like tape down some of it and then paint over it. And then we remove the tape and you have the first layer that you did still showing. It like resists the new layer of paint. And then you have the next layer that you did. Like we do things where we intentionally are like, oh, I don't really know how this is going to look when I'm done. So it kind of like starts to take you outside of yourself. And then it's kind of like, okay, so now what? What do you like? What do you want to like play up on this canvas and what's not really working? And maybe we'll paint something over that. Like, mm -hmm. so kind of like take it one step at a time. Um, and again, I think whatever 
Like, that's my first answer, like, if I was working with someone. But if you want to buy a sketchbook and you want some pastels and you want to just, like, you know, represent your view out your window or your dog or whatever, like, play. No one has to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's so lovely. And you know what I like just in, in how you're describing um, some of the techniques that you use? It's this idea of, like, really – being inside your body, being inside your um, heart space of, you know, and that's what this podcast is about, right? Listening to your inner voice and just letting that lead you. Mm -hmm. And I think the practice of that in a small thing, you know, like a sketch or a painting or, you know, maybe it's journaling, maybe whatever it is, whatever that art looks like, right? The practice of that small thing takes us to the practice of having a new perspective a new awareness if you will on what we're meant to be doing in our mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. and so how do we begin to make that leap how does this um you know art as a practice help us give give us that fresh awareness on what we're doing w- in our spiritual journey and in our physical journey through the world mm-hmm. So how do we jump into that? Yeah, like how do we make the leap from one to the next? How do you start to to um, create this awareness piece that you speak of in your life's purpose? Mm-hmm. You you jump in and just do it and do it consistently, and I think let let the spiritual and psychological pieces kind of come in as they may you know it isn't you know the it it is not something that you can necessarily measure with with a ruler or a flow chart you know like okay I've been doing art for precisely this long and this is my growth on this chart you know like it's really about about filling out our own wholeness in in that sense Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that there's a, a an element of just honoring where you are. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big piece of understanding your life's purpose is like where you are right now mm-hmm. is part of your purpose. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to always be looking forward, forward, forward. There's something right now in the present for us to help us understand that yes and 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 there's also a surrendering to that and also an acceptance of that because maybe right now it doesn't feel great but understanding that this is all part of it makes it a little bit easier i think oh yeah oh totally totally yeah um there's this great quote by alice walker i I don't need to read the whole thing. It's kind of long. But she basically is talking about these spaces of uncertainty and whether it leads to depression or fear or whatever, very much like globally what's going on right now. And that once we become tuned in, once we've lived through enough of those and we pay attention and we are perhaps nurturing that that creative spirit, whether we're literally making art or not, that those spaces of chaos will actually be ones we look forward to because we know how much growth comes out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also think that it's really valuable to have handmade objects and artwork in your home. Like, you know, I, I like to sing in the shower. I think it's very therapeutic and healthy for me. I will never be like, I'm never going to be recording a CD, you know, like right. that's definitely not something that's going to happen, but I can still express that joy of singing. And some people might feel that way about visual art. Um, and that's great and fine. And just like I can go to a concert, you can also have handmade works of art in your space. And I think that just like listening to a great singer you know, it can it can feed your spirit in a very parallel way to actually making the work itself because, you know, something that's handmade, whether it's a bowl or a painting, 
it it started out as a lump of clay or a blank canvas and some human out of pure courage and joy and stubbornness like forged it into something beautiful and it's it's like the living embodiment of that experience and you can you know have those things in your home instead of just mass produce things that you know don't have any human spark I love that so much and you know I it brings to mind two things I have um, a mug that I actually bought as a present for someone and then (laughs) loved it so much I kept it for myself (laughs) and it's a handmade mug that has wildflowers pressed Mm. into it oh wow and there's something really magical about it like it just it's like when I hold the mug in my hands I feel the energy of the person who made it, of that artist who made it. Like it just, I just know it's special. Mm-hmm. And same thing um, in my studio and anyone who follows me on Instagram or looks at my website will know I have a wall, um, a sort of gallery wall. Mm-hmm. And each thing it has, you know, there's some quotes on there. There's some pictures of my kids, but there's a few, um, you know, prints that I ordered from people that I know, from artists that I know, and I pick them out purely based on how they make me feel when I look at them. Mm-hmm. And there's not like a, uh, there's not a theme. There's not anything. It's not anything about color particularly. It's just like when I look at that picture, the painting of the woman letting her hair down mm-hmm. from behind, I love the way that makes me feel. And so I really thank you for saying that because that in of itself can be another form of how we nurture our own soul, really, because when we surround ourselves, when we um, create a place that we can inhabit that makes us feel the way we want to feel, it becomes really powerful, you know, magic, I think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the only word I can think of is magic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jacqueline, this is, this is amazing. And I want to ask you, as I ask all of my guests yes. right now in your life, um, when your life is not what you expected it, like all of us, um, during this pandemic, what is your inner voice saying to you? Hmm. My inner voice is saying to me to embody courage and I don't know what that means in every sense it's um to me courage it's not it's not simply like running into burning buildings so we do appreciate that um when when it needs to happen thank you for Mm -hmm. rescuing dogs and people and all that stuff but it isn't it it's rarely such a external expression and more so well it's very personal and I think for me right now courage has a lot to do with trusting that um that I can take things a little bit slower and also having the courage to and I'm gonna sound like I'm like ripping off your show totally but I really (laughs) mean it it's perfect we're so like aligned Um, really like moving into my own like sense of worth in myself Mm -hmm. like this pandemic has been well not the pandemic itself but the you know the simpler life and you know more solitude and we're not planning trips or tours or anything I've really confronted more of like my own inner fears and doubts about myself. And so now is the time to courageously sort of move through those and let them go. Mm -hmm. And I love that you brought up the worthy, the worthiness piece, because I think when we are talking about what each one of us has been put on this earth to do, the Mm -hmm. life that we were born to live it takes courage, yes, and it also takes owning and understanding that we are worthy enough for mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you know, that we don't have to earn it, that we were born for that, mm. and that's a different kind of understanding than just saying, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, and these are the steps to do it, mm-hmm. so it's about feeling it deep inside of you 
every single day, even on the days where you yell at your kids or, you know, get in a fight with your partner or whatever that looks like, right? We're still worthy of, of the life that we were born to live. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Jacqueline, I would love for you to share with everyone how they can um, learn more about what you do and also see your art. I know that you have pieces for sale and I was on your website and I love, I, I'm going to like take more time to dig in and see what I want to bring into my home. Good. Um, but why don't you tell everyone where they can learn more about that? Absolutely. So yes, my website is Jacqueline Claire Art and everything is spelled traditionally Jacqueline and Claire like the store at the mall Jacqueline Claire art and I do have a code for your listeners it's oh, in wonderful. yeah in her voice 10 one zero um, for 10 percent off everything on my website and with those same that same handle Jacqueline Claire art I'm on Instagram I'm on Facebook my video series of teaching art it's actually a donation based class and I'm I've just converted my patreon into a classroom for as as long as this global situation is going on so people can take those classes at their own pace at whatever level financially that they want to um, and that's so that's also Jacqueline Claire art on patreon mm-hmm. so those are some of the places I can be found Wonderful. And so for those of you who are listening who are really feeling pulled to art as a practice, this is a great way to dive in and have some um, space created for you to learn some techniques Mm -hmm. and know what tools to use in order to be able to create something that's really enjoyable. It sounds fun. It sounds yeah. fun to me. I, I want to get messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Jacqueline. Well, I'll put links to all of those things and the discount code in the show notes. So whatever podcast app that you're using to listen to this, you can find it there and also on my website. Jacqueline, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. My pleasure. I agree. This is great. Thank you, Kelly. Right. First of all, I want to apologize for the sound. My sound, I've been having some sound issues and I can't quite figure it out. And I just wanted to let you know that I am aware of that and I'm working on it. So if anybody has any advice, it has something to do with my input and I'm not exactly sure. So thank you for bearing with me on that. I tried to make it, um, I tried to fix it as much as I could. So hopefully it will be better in the future. Now, Jacqueline, wasn't she just lovely? I hope that you were inspired by that maybe to go check out some of her classes or to go check out some of her art. Actually, that's on my list of things to do too. Um, I did a quick browse when I was on her website before the podcast, but I really want to go dig in and see what looks inspiring to me. But I just love the idea of using all different kinds of practices in your life to ground you, to support you, to help you feel the way you want to feel, to create alignment and to connect you with your inner voice. Man, those practices are powerful. And that's what we're going to be digging into in my workshop this weekend. I really hope that you can come. I, more than anything, if you're feeling a pull, I want you to give this to yourself. This is something that you need. It's not just something that you want. This is something that can change you. It can change your attitude. It can change your mood. It can change your motivation. It can change your life truly. And I want to be a part of that. So check it out. Kellycover.com slash practices. It's this Sunday, May 31 at 10 a.m. Eastern. It's 90 minutes on Zoom. It's going to be a great morning. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Remember, when you show up in this world as you, when you are aligned, when you are listening to your inner voice, you are unstoppable. You are powerful. You are worthy. 